Um, hello to all the tree people, to the, to the bird people, <laughs> to the predator people. Um, feels like we have a really fantastic cross-section of New Zealand's conservation ecosystem here at this conference. It's feeling like a meeting of the Nahiri Network. I'm pretty excited to be here with you all. Um, as you've just seen, my name is Natalie Whitaker. I'm a technology designer. Uh, specifically, I try to design digital marketplaces that achieve social and environmental change. Um, I like to use technology and markets to attract crowds of people to make a big impact. Uh, the, the most well-known marketplace that I've built um, is called Give a Little. Um, the experience of building and running Give a Little gave me a really deep appreciation for how New Zealanders come together to trust one another, to work together in times of really great challenge. Um, but my actually my favourite marketplace uh, that I've been involved in building is Trees That Count. I was inspired by Sir Stephen Tyndall's vision for millions more native trees and it was an absolute privilege to be asked to work with Project Crimson to design and build the Trees That Count marketplace after I finished up on Give a Little. Um, for the last six years I've been working to support the regeneration of nature in New Zealand, um, specifically nature-based solutions, uh, with a particular focus on the food system and forests. Um, but uh, because the youth panel was so cool, um, I actually want to tell you that I've been working on this since I was 11. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you a quick story um, to give you a sense of how committed I am to the trees. Um, back in my school days, so this is like the mid-90s, uh, I was given the lofty honour of head girl of my intermediate school. And uh, one of my defining acts as head of the school council um, was to send away for a native uh, nursery catalogue. And I made a giant order for native um, seedlings to cover our school field. Um, about four weeks after I placed my mail order, uh, two giant trucks turned up down our street um, full of native trees um, to, my, to my home address. And I just promptly redirected them to the school grounds and said, great, that's, it's great we can now have our um, tree planting day at school. Uh, but what I'd kind of, it all sounded great, but I'd actually neglected to tell the school principal of my plan. <laughs> and uh, he wasn't that impressed when I forwarded him the email, uh, the, the um, invoice to pay for all the trees. So that was, um, that was really my beginning um, of understanding the, the funding relationship for trees. And I've been working on it ever since, trying to get back to better practice. But um, in this present moment today, I'm actually here representing Toha. We're a team of diverse professionals and private investors who have been working together to redesign a system level solution for New Zealand to help accelerate climate action and regenerate nature. I actually had a really structured and quite technical talk um, to give today and um, it's behind those that slide there. Um, but I'm actually uh, not going to talk about that. I was going to talk about the relationship between impact measurement and markets and how we can do better than the ETS and how technology exists to take a less clunky approach to valuing and verifying sequestration because it's no longer the 90s when we design the ETS. Um, I was going to say that we can take a more nuanced approach to additionality, uh, that we can have better offsets, um, that we can go beyond just carbon, that we can have all these new financial instruments that value the regeneration of forests for their their capacity to do wonderful things for the soil and the water and for biodiversity. But actually being here uh, at this conference in person has kind of shifted my sense of this moment. Um, it's a real privilege to be in the room with so many people who hold a common vision for our land and for our nation. And I'm going to go off piste and just throw the presentation out um, because I want to acknowledge the mood and the alignment of everybody's interests in the room. Uh, but if you do want to hear that presentation, um, you can actually just come across to the Toha stand and we'll, we'll organise a Zoom call and I'll give you that, that technical, technical presentation. Basically in Toha, for the last four years, we've been in R&D designing this market system to get large-scale capital to the front line of nature-based solutions um, because we're just simply not seeing enough investment and coordination of resources to scale up for what we need to be doing. Um, we're in the process of launching the Toha system now. 
It's all about frontline action and supporting it. It's about using the measurement data that you can capture at the frontline about the biosphere and about our actions within it to create new value for the people who are on the land actually doing the work. In Toha, we absolutely love trees. We love forests. We love them for all the reasons that we already know. Um, but we also want to see these outcomes delivered while maintaining regenerative food production in a way that um, provides farmers and all landowners with a sustainable future. And we also want to see indigenous knowledge and indigenous land management unleashed and aligned with the market, just like the IPCC is calling for. To help achieve this, we are launching a, a new market. It's called the New Zealand Climate Innovation Marketplace. It's going to be an innovation market, just like the title, um, for new products in the voluntary space that we hope over time will help us account for our contributions towards New Zealand's NDC, our nationally determined contribution. We want to help evolve the ETS. We want to stop throwing stones at it and help evolve it um, and help create the new products that we can't even imagine yet for the ETS. Um, it's kind of at this point that I could go right down into the mechanics of using impact measurement to actually pull this off, but post-COVID, um, it feels super important to take these rare moments of being together in person to actually acknowledge the shared mission that we're all holding and to create space to actually move into a frame of action. In this room, we have parties that are dedicated to recloaking the whenua, working with community organisations and doing the hard work with farmers, landowners and communities. We also have groups that are very pro-pine. We, uh, we have teams of people that are looking to bring forward new science for the market. We've got many who are representing agencies and investors that need to be more connected to the community realities of doing this work. And we have people who are thinking about the systems level challenge that we face. And it's sometimes easy to come to conferences like this and actually just feel like an observer or a passenger in a conversation. But here in the room, we actually all know that it's just not enough this time. Uh, it's not enough for, to just be talking about it. We, we all want to get moving and we all know and feel the urgency of this work. And it feels like this room is filled with people who want to swing into action for big change now, and it feels really great. We have actually already done the work to achieve consensus on a lot of the topics that we've, that we've been talking about over the last couple of days. We, we all know that we love native forests. We all want them to be valued for the, the very diverse benefits that they provide. Almost everybody in the room knows that we must empower farmers and landowners and communities and Māori land trusts to actually achieve these goals because many of us aren't actually on the land on a day-to-day -day basis. We know that there are still giant policy gaps to pulling this off, but essentially the mandate to swing into action for more trees has already been handed back to us, the community, by government and corporates and the forestry industry at large. There's no special institution that's coming to save our native forests. It's actually just going to be up to us to keep pushing on this agenda. It's going to be up to everybody in this room. But just like the trees, we're actually beautifully networked in a complex system ourselves already. And we're starting to see the diverse human network that's necessary to regenerate our forest systems. I want to actually just um, do some shout outs. Uh, I wanted to extend huge gratitude to Pure Advantage. The work that Pure Advantage does to bring politicians and the public uh, closer together on these issues in forums like this is extraordinarily valuable. I want to thank the trustees of, of Pure Advantage for the personal leadership that you're each providing to this movement. And I also want to acknowledge Simon Miller for the care and attention and the space that Simon creates to hold these important conversations. I also want to acknowledge, and I feel very grateful for all the private investors that are backing Toha. We've got a lot of investment infrastructure that we need to build in the hope, well, to provide hope and resilience for the climate journey ahead. And so I want to acknowledge Sharon Bryant, who's in the room, and Sir Stephen Tyndall. Actually, I want to go a bit further with the Tyndall family through the Tyndall Foundation and through K1W1 that have just invested wholeheartedly in backing this movement for so many years. 
and many bright and brilliant teams across New Zealand today owe, owe their existence to the, the funding that has pro been provided by, by Sir Steventon and his family through those two, two organisations. And we're starting to see the beginnings of a really powerful aligned effort to change things. I want to acknowledge the other epic leadership that we have in the room, Dame Anne, David Hall, Rob Morrison, Jeff Ross, these people are keeping the campaign for regeneration and native forests alive in the media almost on a weekly basis at the moment. And so we owe them a debt of gratitude. There are many public servants, familiar faces that you know, keep coming to these events and keep having the meetings and in the wings saying, you know, restating your personal commitment to this work. We're all relying on you to do the really hard stuff inside of government to actually make these big changes. I want to acknowledge Tane's Trees Trust because so many years of your hard work and research can now almost be ready for change in the market. I want to acknowledge Robin and the team at Trees That Count. This team is breaking new ground and in conversations with corporates every day, challenging them to think beyond carbon. We've had, this is the narrative that we've heard at the conference, but, but Robin and her team are actually in these conversations every day with our biggest emitters, asking us to think differently about this. I want to acknowledge the innovation and courage of all the startups out there, but in particular I want to tip my hat to Joe and Nick and the team at Carbon Crop uh, for the work that they're leading. It's not easy uh, to, to challenge the status quo. There's networks of communities here as well, catchment coordinators. This is the critical work. But finally, what I want to acknowledge is the members of the Tairawhiti community that are here in the audience. Um, for the last four years, I've been based out in Gizzi with at our R&D base for, for Toha, really understanding what it means to be challenged on land use and confront the social and economic um, realities of some of the decisions that we're making to, to build um, resilience in our climate future. And the Tairawhiti community has been so generous, um, they're so hopeful, there's so much abundant sort of trust and generosity um, in our economy out there, and I just can't wait for that to spread beyond the region. So I guess what I'm saying is this is really starting to feel like a movement. But working on climate breakdown and biodiversity loss over the last four years, I'm learning personally to manage like the constant pressure of the overwhelming urgency of this work. And so the muscle that I'm trying to build every day is just identifying the small actions that I can take every day towards these big issues. And so last night when I was looking at my presentation, I was thinking, oh, no, I'm just going to write six actions that have come from my reflections um, of the conference so far. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. So sort of action number one. There appears to be a critical need for a sub-focus on nursery supply at every scale from large-scale commercial operations that appear to not be viable, uh, despite the fact that we have an overwhelming demand for native trees, all the way to the backyard nurseries. If you are aware of any networks who are focusing on this specific issue in the system uh, that is necessary for our scale-up, please get in contact with our team at Toha because uh, we really want to go dive deeper into this and bring some urgent solutions as part of the launch of the New Zealand climate innovation market. Um, please head over to the desk and speak to Hannah McIntosh, who heads up the pledge side of our marketplace. So action point number two. For farmers, um, particularly sheep and beef farmers, the Hewaki Kinoa announcements of recent weeks um, made it very clear that valuing the work to protect biodiversity is now key to the viability of farming in the future. Farmers, we see you in Toha. Uh, we know that you are best placed to do this work, that the biodiversity on your farm is critical, and that we want to um, really make sure that you uh, have the opportunity to unlock new value into your farming business because you can undertake this work to regenerate nature. But to do this, we need your help to change the narrative and the focus, particularly in the media. We need to shift from fighting government on pricing greenhouse gas emissions to ensuring that government, corporates, industry, supply chains and consumers all value your willingness and ability to be kaitiaki on the land. It's going to take everybody valuing the biodiversity. But we do need to bring payments for biodiversity protection work and these outcomes right into the middle of the conversation around agricultural emissions. 
If you're a farmer or you operate a catchment group, please connect with Erin Crampton and our team who heads up our regenerative agriculture efforts for more information on how to get involved here. Point number three, I want to do my best to acknowledge the situation facing Māori landowners. Um, that our Māori land owners were forced to defend the current ETS settings and the approaches in favour of pine trees and monoculture, exotics, is a deep sadness and an enormous demonstration of a failed market. This is not climate justice. Indigenous lands should be able to return to indigenous forest cover. Māori must be able to regenerate indigenous forests on the land that has been returned to them through treaty settlement without compromise. This surely must have to be a minimum for the path ahead. We need markets that help our country heal, not further divide us. The carbon sequestration potential of native forests on Māori land can be valued higher in a voluntary market at pr prices higher than the ETS if we choose to value them that way. We need to see leadership in our corporates and in our offsetters to recognise that there is some reconciliation required here to ensure that we don't have runaway monoculture pine forestry on Māori land. Please be in contact with Renee Daroa and our team in Toha if you want to understand more about how the New Zealand climate innovation market can assist in these outcomes too. Point five, because I'm going to jump four because it's going to take too long. Um, at Toha, our uh, kind of work in our R&D has helped us see that climate mitigation and adaptation really is just a data sharing challenge. It sounds kind of cute to say, um, but the reality is with measurement data we can change the financial products that we have available and those products can in turn change the financial markets. And with the capital, the new capital from these products, we can start investing in and rewarding the change that we want to see alongside our public spending. So if you care about climate change and you care about the forests and you care about creating a better carbon market free of greenwashing or an ETS that won't blanket New Zealand and pine trees, then the single most important strategy for your, you or your organisation is working out how to share the data and knowledge that you have about the regeneration of Indigenous forest cover in New Zealand. We must all become giant advocates for data sharing. Please find the valuable data and talk to us at Toha about how to monetize your organisation's data through the New Zealand climate innovation market. If your organisation has valuable IP about how to ensure that Indigenous forests can thrive, please talk to us about developing a product for the marketplace. Sharing data and knowledge is one of the single biggest things that we can do right now, and it's easy to do from a laptop, which is you know, one of the rare things that we can do for nature from our laptop. Um, and despite all of us existing in this complex system, if we actually start to share our data, like the trees share resources under the soil, then we really do have a shot at this. But finally, and personally, I just want to remind us all that all of our politicians are just humans too. Um, for all of us that have been working in this space and on the agenda for native forests for, for years, it actually feels very disappointing to see so many policy decisions fall short of the boldness that we need to protect nature. But from our work in Tōha, we've had the privilege of seeing that many of our politicians are needing to make decisions which actually conflict with their personal values. We're all actually struggling to reconcile our personal, commercial or political interests with our shared interest in a healthy environment and a thriving return to nature. But collectively, if we keep challenging the system and providing the politicians with the air cover they need to make bolder decisions, then maybe we will see some policy that makes sense. This is absolutely critical as we head into an election year next year. And if there was one message I'd like to leave with this conference, it is that the, it is critical that the government play a role in helping new markets establish a new value for biodiversity. Private markets will pay for the carbon value, we know that. And private markets eventually will pay for the data that proves nature positive economic activity. 
But to get the ball rolling, we need the government to be a catalyst by providing biodiversity payments and other incentives to even up the playing field for different land uses and for different landowners. If we can have biodiversity payments funded by public finance, then we can have a future of biodiversity credits and a whole lot of other cool things and other different carbon offsets too. And these might fully start to recognise the value of native forests. So at next year's election, let's all vote for true climate action and a just, just transition. Um, but let's be a bit more demanding than the last two elections. Let's work together to ensure that each candidate across New Zealand um, is asked to declare their position on biodiversity. Let's be specific and make sure that where each can, just where each candidate stands on making sure that farmers and landowners receive new value for the work that they are doing to protect the significant natural areas on their land. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, there are just so many reasons for us to connect and work together on this climate journey. Uh, please know that the Toha team stands at the ready to help you um, in as part of this network um, and the wider movement to regenerate our forests. We are building a platform to help everybody coordinate and cooperate for many of the, the, the topics that have been discussed at the conference today. Um, best wishes to everybody for all the collective work that lies ahead. Thank you. Thank you.